podcast, an inside look at California politics in the state legislature. I am your host, Assemblyman Josh Hoover, and very happy to be joined again today by uh, our Capital Director, Teresa Trujillo. Welcome back to the podcast. Hi, Josh. It's Second great. time. <laughs> Second time. I, I, I slept last night. So you got, that's, you got that's, a lot of rest. that's the good news. <laughs> um, yeah, I wasn't. I'm like, yeah, I'm not as intimidated anymore about yeah. being on the podcast with you because I had fun last time. It's so good, yeah. yeah, I'm happy no, to be this, back. It'll be fun. Um, we are recording this on probably the craziest week of the year. Yes. So how are you? So we are entering... Um, the last week of legislative session, we adjourn on August 31st, which sadly this year happens to be a Saturday. Yep. And it looks like we'll probably be here on Saturday. So your holiday weekend is ruined. Yeah. Labor Day weekend. Not that. <laughs> <laughs> like no breaks. Um, yeah. So it's um, we have uh, Chris McKaylee tweeted this, but we have. 901 bills left that are eligible to be heard. I mean, that doesn't necessarily mean all of them will be heard, but yeah, that's like 150 a day. If mm-hmm. we do, yeah, if we go the same amount each day. Yeah. So how are you feeling about this week? Well, I think it's like the worst week, right? It's just so busy and everything. Although I think we've gotten most of the stuff done last week since we did such a light week last week. Yeah. Um, we normally have two weeks at the end of session, of course. Um, that is all floor all day, every day. Yeah. And last week we did nothing. We basically did nothing. And so they just wanted to save it all for this week and ruin our Labor Day weekend (laughs) (laughs) by potentially working into the night Friday, Saturday, Wednesday, Thursday, today. I mean, it's like, it's, yeah. It's going to be fun. Uh, (laughs) I say that sarcastically. (laughs) Yeah, no, it was frustrating because it's like... um, I think there were three days last week, three session days where uh-huh. we didn't do a single bill. I know. I know. Out of five. <laughs> so it's like, well. Really bad. Um, yeah. It's, that's pretty, it's pretty frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, um, I don't know. I mean, obviously there's fun things about it that I really like, you know? Yeah. Um, it's just like a lot of activity and action and like all kind of yeah. the bills, you know, you get to see, you know, what we stand firm on and kill. Yep. And if we kill anything, if we kill anything <laughs> or the bad bills that they leave the yeah. roll, roll open for like yeah. 10 minutes while they're trying to like, you know, twist arms and get votes. Get basically. Votes. Yeah. No, it's actually really interesting to be a part of. This is actually yeah. my last or first. It's my first, I guess, end of session at the end of a session. Right? Yeah. Because like last year, obviously, it's a two year session. So. Yeah. You know, last year I felt like was it was interesting, but it it wasn't like final. Yeah. And this year it's kind of like do or die. Yeah, for, for sure. For any of the bills, right? So. Yeah. And I will say I've been here, as you know, nearly twenty years, and I believe we've only worked one Saturday in that twenty year span. And I think it was on a budget. What do you remember? What? Oh, on a. Bu- it was. It was a. Bu- it was a budget. But we, you don't remember session ever going to a Saturday? Because I don't I remember don't. session ever going on in the Saturday. last thirteen years. Mm-hmm. I don't remember. Yeah. Uh, any session on a Saturday? Yeah. I think it was, it happened like pre-2010 when the budget went on a Saturday, when we were having those really long drawn out budget things and we came in, I think like they got a deal on a Saturday or something like that. And budget like occasionally happens, like uh, budget committees tend to sometimes happen on weekends and stuff, but like usually there's a lot of momentum for getting done with session on a Friday. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so I'm hoping we like work, work faster than expected. Yeah. And you know, I have like a Friday and Saturday night at least. Well, I'm cool. If we just kill half the bills, <laughs> as long as they're not my bills. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's, that's my current stance on the situation. Yeah. Which we do have two bills, two, yeah. two of the, our number one and two bills up um, this week. It's pretty yeah, exciting. This week. Yeah, we've got the, um, let's see, what is it, AB 2903? Which yeah, the is homelessness bill. Homelessness accountability. Yep. Awesome. Um, really excited about that one. Got it out of uh, Senate appropriations, which we were kind of nervous about. I know. It costs a lot um, of money to, you know, yeah. make sure that we're really keeping track of, like, funding and yeah. and um, outcomes for the homeless to make sure we're, like, only, you know, giving money to programs that are effective it's like a super important bill, and yeah. I'm I'm so excited that you got that out of approps. Yeah, me too. And any money I think you spend on transparency, like, is money well spent. Yeah, because right? yeah, 
um, you know, we're spending billions. Yeah. And, and I think it's going to cost a few million. Yeah. To, yeah. Uh, at least according to the state agencies. Yeah. You know, and it's it's just frustrating. It's yeah. Like, yeah. It seems like a good investment um, to track where the money's going. Yeah, exactly. But, since we have. And that's what yet. the auditor has recommended. <laughs> that is what the auditor recommended. So we so, are doing good things. Yeah, I got to give the legislature a little credit on that one, actually, because I, you know, I kind of thought I wasn't sure how that was going to be received. Uh And every hurdle like they've pushed it forward, even, Uh you know, chair of the Appropriations Committee. When I had a conversation with her, she's like, this is really important. Uh I think it's telling that means that Californians are fed up. Yeah. And they want this problem solved. For sure. Yeah. So they're like, let's do it. You know, it's it's worth it. Like you said, it's worth the investment because right now we found out, unfortunately, we weren't tracking any dollars, any outcome, any of the outcomes. Yep. And spent it spent over 20 billion dollars. So it's like this is like this was already needed. (laughs) Yeah. I think it's a really interesting year for homelessness because you have obviously this accountability bill that's going to get the governor. I think the big question is. Is he going to sign it? Yeah. You know, I think considering it was the state auditor's recommendation, he's going to be hard pressed to not sign it. I hope you're right. I think, um, yeah, I hope you're right. He can't say the the thing is, is what he what he's said on previous bills is that we're already doing this. We're already doing this. Right, right, right. Well, we're not already doing this. Yeah. It was already researched, looked into. We're not doing it. The funny thing is even he's like cited this audit a few times in some of his like commentary. Yeah. So it's in fact, I didn't put it in the show today, but um, he was on shoot. He was at the Democratic National Convention last week and he went on Fox News. He did. Oh, gosh, I'm totally forgetting uh, her name. But um, I watched it, too. Yeah. But he he basically kind of I don't know if it's like a a slip of the tongue or what Mm -hmm. happened, but he basically said that, you know, homelessness is due, you know, in the homelessness in California is due to our kind of neglect and poor policy choices. Uh (laughs) And it was like, wait, what did he just say that? Right. Like I had to take a double take on that one. Yeah. Um, But yeah, I I mean, I think with that, with this accountability bill to maybe bring some more accountability to um, state spending, mm-hmm. and then you have the grants pass case this year that was, um, um, you know, um, basically uh, allowing local government more authority to clear encampments mm-hmm. and, and really, you know, enforce their camping ordinances. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, that uh, assembly member Haney's bill to like allow some money to be spent on sobriety first yes and treatment first programs yep. versus housing first programs which is always kind of the rub in the legislature yeah um like all three of those things i think would make tremendous improvements in the homelessness situation yep and okay. they're all kind of happening this year so uh-huh. you know i i i don't know it's definitely telling <laughs> yeah so. yeah it's exciting uh and then the our other bill yeah which is the um our phone free schools act yep um, to uh, basically reduce uh, smartphone use in, in schools, K through 12 schools during the school mm-hmm. day. Um, that one looks like it's it's on a good path as well. Yeah, it's exciting. Uh, up for a vote in the Senate. This yeah. Week, so, yeah. And two really good bipartisan bills, too. We yeah. have a lot of bipartisanship on both of those bills. Tons of bipartisan support. The yeah. governor actually has come out and said he supports the smartphone bill. So yep. um, that's really good news, too. Yep. So. We've been working with the governor's office like really closely on that bill to just make sure that it's you know, going to get signed and. Yeah. And I know like, um, I don't know, it's kind of my passion bill, but, mm-hmm, uh, it is. you know, I'm excited about it. I think it's going to actually do a lot for, mm-hmm. um, I think there's a lot we need to do in education beyond mm-hmm. this bill. <laughs> Let's just put yeah. it, I will say that, but I, I do think that, you know, that kind of ubiquity of smartphones, you know, during the school day has mm-hmm. really caused a lot of distraction mm-hmm. for students, a lot of academic um, kind of struggles and mm-hmm. mental health struggles, obviously bullying and yeah. just so many things that, um, you know, these amazing devices that we like, you know, we use every day. <laughs> and like, yeah, I was just thinking about yesterday, like we was it like 10 years ago where like we didn't even I mean, basically we got convinced uh-huh. Every person in the world got convinced that they have to have this I at know. all times. Uh-huh. And now we all do. So I know. I was a late adopter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll say it was a very late d- adopter. But, no. but even like the late adopters, like everyone just has one. I mean, I my parents both have smartphones. Mm-hmm. My, you know, like 
our kids, you know, yeah. two of our kids have smartphones that mm-hmm. are highly regulated. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's just, um, it's incredible that, but you know, with all the benefits of these awesome little machines, yeah. like you also have a lot of downsides and I think for, sure. for younger people, especially it's, yeah. it's tough. Well, I'm really mindful of how much time I spend on my phone and so many people are just on it constantly and it's just not, that's not yeah. healthy. Yeah. You know, I so. know, I know. Um, yeah, we, we try to do like phone free dinners and stuff at home <laughs> Yeah, when we do family dinners. Like <laughs> I would hope so. At least once a week <laughs> when we're all together <laughs> this week, we will not be having a family dinner. Yeah. I'll be at the Capitol every night. Yeah. Um, but, uh, that being said, uh, after all this craziness of this week, yeah. and we'll get into some of the bills that are yeah. being discussed this week. Um, uh, what, do you have any fun fall travel plans well, or anything fun going on? Yeah, you, you know, I do for sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's between traveling and uh, live music. And concerts. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And traveling and live music. Yeah. Um, so right after session, is over. I am going to Tennessee. Nice. Nashville. That's exciting. Um, yeah, and I'm going to see a concert there. Actually, of you course, have to, of right? course I <laughs> am. Of course I am. Yeah, and lots of live music all the time. But my niece lives there. My niece and my nephew. That's so cool. I go there like every couple of years just to go see her. Nice. And this time though, we're going to um, go to the Smoky Mountains too. Very cool. I, I didn't. I didn't know it was the most visited national park in the country, which oh, is kind I of didn't interesting. Know that either. That's weird. I know. It is weird. I'm like, oh, really? Um, so yeah. So and it nice. so it, it actually goes. It's in between um, uh, Eastern Tennessee and it goes a little bit into North Carolina. So sure. um, we're gonna um, we rented a place out there, and so that's gonna be a lot of fun to like just yeah. explore the Smoky Mountains. You, you like Nashville too, though, right? I like, love Nashville. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I've never been to Tennessee. Yeah, so it's it's it's, it's a pretty fun state. It's yeah. a lot of fun. I love it. It looks awesome. Yeah. I, I have a shirt that says Nashville is my happy place. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's a lot of fun. I really, really love it. My my husband loves it. And we're taking our two kids, that's awesome. which will be a lot of fun to see so they could see their, co- their cousin and stuff like that. So, so awesome. that's super exciting. And then, you know, my big, 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 big trip is in December. Oh, yeah. yeah. Where is it again? Or yeah. It's, it's Cambodia and Thailand. Cambodia and Thailand. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. But I love architecture, specifically ancient architecture. And so yeah. I want to see Angkor Wat, and that's in Cambodia. Okay. And so I'm like, okay, what's around there that would be fun to visit? And I said, it's like right next to Thailand. That and so I'm awesome. like, well, Thailand. Oh, my gosh, Thailand's awesome. gorgeous. So, I don't even want to ask you how much those flights cost. but <laughs> uh, they, weren't, they weren't really that bad, really? but you have to oh. fly out of San Francisco. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you just can't sense. fly out of Sacramento. Yeah. It's too expensive. So. That's pretty cool, though. That's exciting. It is You're so not ex- taking the kids to that I'm one. I'm not though. taking no, the kids. Yeah, yeah. No, no. No, they don't get to come. They <laughs> don't get to come. I at first thought that maybe I would want them to come, but absolutely not. No. <laughs> yeah, I feel like we always do, like, every year, like, one kid trip and one yeah. non-kid trip. Yeah. Because, like, yeah. you can't, you know. Yeah. I think that's... I think that's fair. Yeah. And that's what I balance. think we try to do too. I mean, we used to I take them kids, every but year, but yeah, there's times you it's need a different time. dynamic. Well, you need time. <laughs> you need just like time with your spouse as well. Exactly. Yeah, totally. I think that's 100%. super important. So yeah. what about you? Do you have anything? No, yeah, just um, hanging out, doing, <laughs> uh, doing the, we got the election this year. So I know that's, we that's do. That's my vacation. <laughs> uh, but, but we'll, we'll. We'll I'm get sure to you guys the, will do we'll, we'll some do something things. after that at some yeah. point. But um, good, yeah, it'll be fun. So. I know I'm a little bit more of a planner than you. Yeah, I kind of like sure. I kind of plan things. So. I'm sure we'll yeah yeah we'll, we'll figure something out. But um, yeah, and the kids are in school, so it's like I, I know. know. But yeah, know. usually in like December we'll end up in Tahoe or I don't know something. Yeah, you know something last minute. <laughs> so funny. Um, so let's get into the stories of the week if you're open to it. Let's yeah, see. sounds fun. So this first one off the top, um, SB94. Yep. I don't know if uh, you're, I mean, you're of obviously familiar, I'm familiar with, with it. it. <laughs> We're all familiar with it because <laughs> it was a bill that was introduced and then pretty heavily criticized early in the year. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, these organized retail theft bills went through, got signed by the governor last week, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden SB94 comes back. I'm hearing that it was part of some negotiation Interesting. Uh, on um, you know, some of the other crime bills that some legislators did not like uh-huh. or didn't like that they were moving forward. Um, 
And so SB 94 essentially would allow certain uh, people that have been sentenced to life without parole Mm -hmm. um, who committed crimes before June 5th, 1990 to petition a judge for lesser sentences. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, some of the people that this applies to are pretty incredible. The Mendez brothers. The Mendez brothers, (laughs) right? Yeah. Like the worst of the worst Uh criminals. Yeah. Um, Yeah. I think the voters passed an initiative after 1990. Yeah, that Prop basically, 115. Yeah. That's, so yeah. I just, I don't know. What are your thoughts? It's crazy. Um, I don't know. I just feel like um, people feel like that their communities aren't safe, right? Yeah. And I think that that's because the legislature um, for so long has just been unwilling to incarcerate. They just don't really want to, yeah. they don't want to incarcerate anyone. And they. Yeah. Th- this legislature has been very much more, caring about the interests of criminals versus the interest of victims. Completely. And I feel like the, this is just another example of, of that, yeah. right? It's just like we're looking, we're always looking at ways to like do early release for, you know, criminals. And it doesn't matter clearly what they do. I mean, this is people yeah. that, that you know, they're in prison for killing people. Yeah. Um, and I mean, to get sentenced to life without parole is you yeah. got to do something pretty bad. Well, yeah, and so like one of the one of the exceptions that this wouldn't apply to is if you killed three or more more people. So right. like so if you killed two, I guess it's okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, you can you, you, you can, can get, out get out early for killing two, but not three. And then the other yeah. criticism is like so if you are a cop killer, you can't get out. But then you know if you kill a firefighter or, or right. any other, you can. I mean, yeah, it's just it's really arbitrary. A lot of the things their exceptions are kind yeah. of arbitrary, and it's like. You know, these people, it's like we, we, we need to care. We need to care more about the victims. We need mm-hmm. to think about the victims. Yeah. Um, sure. And we're just not doing that enough, I think, in the legislature. And this this is just another example. Yeah, for sure. So No, it's uh, – I, so what I'm hearing on this bill is that it may not have the votes. Okay. Um, it did not get amended on Friday. So mm-hmm. I guess, like, they were working on some amendments – and um, the deadline was technically Friday mm-hmm. for amendments. Uh, it did not was not part of that um, like grouping of bills. And so Ashley Zavala with KCRA basically put out a tweet about how um, you know it didn't get amended. So does that mean it's dead? I mean, the problem with that is that in this building, until like Wednesday night, mm-hmm. nothing's dead, right? Because yeah. you can waive those rules and all that those deadlines. So yeah, I think I, I'm kind of on high alert on this one to see yeah. you know what happens by the time this podcast comes out. I think will be the final day to really amend it. Yeah. So yeah, I I'm on. I would honestly be surprised if it passed, just because I mean, at the end of the day, it is an election year, and that does matter. <laughs> it matters because yeah. members like are a little bit more cautious about how they vote on certain things. It's true. Yeah, and in, in in the whole, that's true. I think like it'll be interesting because there's a lot of people too that are leaving. Yeah. So, like, do they vote on it just because they don't care? Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't like, know either. It's, it's kind of, but either way, just from a, whether it's because it's an election year or whether it's just like a terrible bill, like, I feel like, <laughs> I, I feel like it, it shouldn't pass, bill. right? Like, I, I'm really hoping that we don't mess with this this year. Yeah. I, I do think they would, the author would need a lot to go right for this to work mm-hmm. out. And it's like, yeah. and these bills always amaze me too. Cause it's like, what's the motivation here? You I know. know. Like who, who are you? I mean, the amount of people this applies to is, you know, um, I think they said only like 500, like 500 people. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. Like 550 people. Um, but like, yeah, like why? Well, and at the end of the I mean, day, the governor can already do this, and the governor does do this. Right. They, yeah, if, they can yeah. commute sentences, sure. and they could, you if know, there pardon. Was a, like, a, yeah, an issue with the case, or like, yeah. there's reasonable doubt, whatever. Like, the governor has yeah. that authority. So, so we already have that like mechanism, yeah, in place. So I'm not sure why we need something else. Yeah, it's crazy. I can't remember um, how whose rookie card it was, but there's like a rookie card for mm-hmm. basketball. Uh, so when the Menendez brothers murdered their parents, uh-huh. they went on like a spending spree. Yep. Right? They like took uh-huh. their credit cards and they went across the state or I don't remember they uh, exactly everything they yeah. did. But one of the things they did is they bought courtside seats at a basketball game, mm-hmm. um, like an NBA game. Mm-hmm. And uh, they showed up and went to the game. And there's uh, that was the same night that some like new player 
got his photo taken like live shooting a shot mm-hmm. and it was put on his rookie card and in the background of the rookie card you can see the menendez brothers oh, that's like, crazy. It, so it's now like one of the most valuable <laughs> like cards in existence because it's so crazy that like they're in the photo like, i know that is crazy i don't know i'm gonna have to find it because it's pretty wild um, yeah I, I, I don't remember everything off the top of my head but it's pretty funny yeah that's so that's crazy it's pretty wild but yeah so keeping a close eye on that yeah um let's uh bump this igs pull down to the bottom okay we'll, we'll lead into our clip of the week with that one um but uh let's talk about the journalism bill okay mm-hmm. so i i now yeah. i'm and now i'm trying to remember the bill number i want to pull up the article here i know i don't know but like, the uh buffy wix is the yeah author. there was a wix bill this year um on basically right a bill to um fund journalism through um essentially by charging tech companies Mm -hmm. right like yeah uh google and facebook would have to basically pay into a system to fund journalists and journalism outlets Mm -hmm. um that got a lot of pushback Mm -hmm. so now um that has kind of been tabled i guess yeah and uh, Google and the author have brokered this deal mm-hmm. with lawmakers to direct millions of dollars to local newsrooms. Um, and, and essentially, it, it's, it's kind of a weird agreement because it's like some of the money would come from the state. Yeah. And then you would have some money that would come from the tech companies that they would put in like a fund that's managed yeah. at UC Berkeley mm-hmm. School of Journalism. Mm-hmm. And then it would somehow be distributed to news outlets based on how many reporters mm-hmm. they have or, you know, how many staff they have. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I know you have thoughts on this. I have a lot of thoughts so I'm on curious this. What your thoughts are. <laughs> well, my <laughs> thoughts are um, do better. Journalists need to do better. It's like, okay, we're bailing you out, but you know, as far as I'm concerned, yeah, journalism is not what it used it's to be. Fallen off. It is not what it used to be. Yeah. It tends to be pretty biased. Yeah. Um, it always just tells one side of the story. And um, I mean, I've it, it's just really frustrating. Yeah. You know, just having a more conservative event. Um that I read stuff and it's like, I, I can never take any of it at, at face value. I mean, yeah, I yeah. always, you always have to do additional research to, to find out like yeah. the truth of things. And I've, I'm, I'm just like, there's so many news organizations where I just feel like it's garbage. It's, yeah. it's absolute garbage. Yeah. It's funny too. Cause like there's some legitimate still like old school, hard hitting reporters. There are. And I feel like they stand out even more now. Yeah. Because there's just so few of them. I know. Right? And there's, but there's some legitimately amazing, there's a handful uh-huh. of really great reporters around the Capitol that are yeah. just, they go after everyone, every mm-hmm. issue. Like they just try to get to the facts and the truth. Yeah. And then, you know, there's folks, uh, and, and there's some journalism schools that have actually embraced this that yep. really are more about activism, yep. you know? And, and I think like there are two, like, I think, um, types of journalism kind of battling it out right now between Mm -hmm. like activist journalists and just like hard hard hitting like old school yeah you know find the truth journalists and they're those are two schools of thought that are definitely colliding right now yeah so when i read an article like from a uh one of our local paper papers and um, and I'm like, wow, this is actually a good article. I always look to see who who is a journalist, and they're always old school. They're the older, yeah, they're older journal. Yeah. Yes, they it's just like have it's like... so noticeable. It's like there's yeah. such a distinct difference because I'm like, wow, this is actually a fair hitting article. Yeah, they kind of bring up points on both yeah, sides. Exactly. And you see like a, a full picture mm-hmm. of the issue, right? Yeah. It's true. It's true. Yeah. And and I mean, that's what journalists are supposed to do. They're supposed to yeah. hold the people in power accountable. Yeah. That is not happening. No matter like who in, you are. Yeah. Instead, it's like, OK, what, what fits in with our narrative? What fits in with our agenda? Who do we want to win the election? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and that's unfortunate. And who's losing is we're losing, like yeah. the readers, because it's like I don't I don't trust a lot of the stuff I read. It's just, it's so one-sided and it's just like, it's really frustrating for me. It's really frustrating. That is an interesting part of it though, too. It's like, I feel like how media is funded now has really Uh changed. You know, it used to be you sell newspapers and ad revenue Mm -hmm. and they still sell ads, but so much of it has gone online now, right? Mm -hmm. 
that to sell ads, you have to get clicks and mm-hmm. what gets clicks. And I think the whole industry now is so drip click driven. Right? It is. Like, and, and, you know, some of this I would definitely put on journalism and, you know, media outlets. I think mm-hmm. they bear a lot of the responsibility. But the other, I think part of it too, is like the people, the, the, kind of the audience also bears some responsibility because yeah. they, I mean, people on both sides of the aisle tend to want more, like leaning content right Mm -hmm. like content that favors one side or the other and and you kind of see this you see some conservative media taking advantage of this and then you see a lot of the mainstream media taking advantage of it on Mm -hmm. on the left and you know it's it's kind of sad like i feel like the alt the motives and the incentives are really not good yeah and and so i don't know (laughs) i don't really know I don't think this fixes any of that, I think is what you're trying to say. Yeah, it doesn't. So. And and for that matter, the other part, which, you know, I have a hard time with, is that the state is giving them $70 million. Like, so we're subsidizing journalism now in the state? Yeah, I know. I don't know. I just, I don't like that. That that doesn't, I, yeah, I'm still I have like, concerns. It, no, I, it's it, honestly, so I think the only other place that has done this, at least based on this article, is some, they did in this Canada. in Canada, right? Uh-huh. Where, there was some like 70 plus million dollar deal brokered on this. Mm-hmm. Very similarly, this is like half that much. Um, yeah, and it hasn't gone through. They haven't give, given anything away. I think there's been lawsuits in Canada and those types yeah. of things. So I feel like even with this deal, they expect the rollout to be like in the future because there's going to be a lot of, yeah. It's controversial. It's well, and, just controversial. And even like UC Berkeley said something like, hey, we don't even know what we're managing here. You yeah. know, like because they're supposed to be managing all this money. Yeah. And they're like, we're willing to do it, but we don't have any details. So I think yeah. more to come on this one for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's uh, I think it's interesting, too, because Google and Facebook were opposed to the bill. Yeah. And they're obviously supporting this deal. Yeah. So that has actually upset a lot of the journalism folks because uh-huh. they were supporting the other bill. Mm-hmm. And now they're a lot of them have now opposed this deal. Yep. And so the the support and opposition coalition have kind of shifted. Yeah. Yeah. So I know they're um, saying it's a giveaway to Google that they got yeah. too good of a deal. You know, it's interesting, though, because I and I actually got a call from one of my local news sources mm-hmm. that does just local news. Yeah. Um, and they called me to ask, like, hey, like, how is this going to impact us? We were kind of talking through some of the uh, the tenets of the deal. But I, I was also talking about the previous bill mm-hmm. and how I worried about that bill. Right. Mm-hmm. Because I think it's uh, Cal Matters had an, was opposed to that bill and yeah. had some statistic that like for digital news articles, like two thirds of the traffic comes through Facebook and Google. Yeah. I mean, you know. And then there's this like fear that if you somehow started charging tech companies directly, yeah. that they would just stop listing news sources on yeah. their sites, right? Exactly. And so then at that point, you're kind of in the opposite. You know, you're you're not accomplishing what you want to accomplish. Yeah. Um, because now no one just has access to the news. Mm-hmm. So it's just yeah, there was a lot of I think problems with the legislation. Yeah. Um, I think I actually spoke against it last year. Yeah. Um, because I'm just worried about the unintended consequences, but. So I, I actually think this deal is probably better than the bill. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> but, oh, for sure. But I agree I, with but that. But I still don't know how this is going to roll out or even mm-hmm. how, how they're going to make it work. Yeah. So. Yeah, I guess we'll have to see. We will see. Um, okay. New um, Gallup poll oh, yeah. says young people don't trust the government or the media, <laughs> which is kind of a funny... Um, <laughs> Okay. Article to <laughs> little segue there <laughs> to, to segue into. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was interesting. So half of voting age members of Generation Z have very little trust in the federal government. Fifty one percent said they have very little trust in the presidency, um, which is up from two thousand twenty three. Mm-hmm. Just fourteen percent said they had a great deal of trust in the White House. Let's see. Less trust in Congress, um, very little trust in, um, let's see, 44% said they have very little trust in the Supreme Court, um, and then uh, and then a quarter of Gen Z respondents said they have very little trust for information found on the internet, um, and they're skeptical of the news, 43% said they have very little trust 
uh, of news outlets. Mm -hmm. So yeah, interesting. Um, yeah, so, well, you know, we yeah. know the the t the 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 temperature of our nation right now. I mean, we're we're really you know each side is going after one another, and so they say they say things that of course is going to lead to these types of things. You know, yeah. it's like if, if something doesn't go your way, then you try to like act like, well, the, you know, United States Supreme court is biased and yeah. they're not good and this and that and the other, even though they actually have unanimous opinions, like the majority of the time that, you know what I mean? There's just a few, you know, yeah. a few issues that, you know, are what they're like pointing to or whatever, but it's like, you know, it's just, they keep on, you know, I mean, it's a lot of our a lot of our politicians are the ones that are, you know, putting doubt in our institutions, yeah. you know, creating creating this doubt in our institutions because like something doesn't go the way they want it to go. And I think that honestly, I think COVID damaged oh, I think the so government too. a lot. Yeah. At least people's trust. In people's it, right? trust in the government. For so sure. I yeah. felt like I really trusted the government until COVID. Yeah. And I saw what the government was doing. And I yeah. was just very, I was just so disheartened by just like everything um, that was happening because yeah. we weren't basing things on science. Yeah. It was like they were manipulating us to try to get us to, to you know, have a certain behavior. And they weren't being honest with us about it. And it's like we ended up finding that out. Yeah. Senator Wilk and I talked about that a little bit last week on the podcast because mm -hmm. uh, just about... I don't know. He he really wants to see like future changes to pandemic approaches, right? Yeah. Like just because he thinks there will be more and we can't handle it that way again. We can't yeah. secede all of our legislative authority to the governor. Yeah. Put him, put one person in charge of everything. You know, and yeah, the whole pandemic was all about command control, mm -hmm. mandate, you know, um and yeah, so it, it's just like just a complete lack of individual freedom and responsibility. Mm -hmm. um, you know, shuttering our schools obviously yeah. um, had tremendous impacts on our kids. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I just think it's interesting though because Gen Z tends to lean on one side of the political spectrum, yeah. right? And yet they have distrust of government. Mm -hmm. But the you know the kind of the side of the political spectrum they lean to is really the I think the party of government yeah. and um you know government is the solution yeah. and so i just think that's an interesting dichotomy it is interesting uh, <laughs> yeah um as you know i you know i often feel like government is oftentimes the one causing the problems yeah so yeah and then they're you know. making a solution for the new problem they, they I mean, we were they talking caused. about homelessness earlier right? yeah it's like you know so but um yeah it's it's an inter interesting little survey so we'll link that in the show notes um, yeah for anyone that wants to dive more into that yeah for sure. um i don't know if you saw this article these are just three kind of more fun stories less okay. policy driven stories but there's this story on uh kids sending their uh, yeah parents sending their kids to school in waymos yeah which yeah. are the autonomous vehicles in san yeah. francisco uh -huh. i don't know if you saw that i did see that yeah it was it, it was funny I, I, I thought, would totally do that, by the I, way. I thought it was funny on, <laughs> on multiple fronts. It was funny on the first front is yeah. that kids aren't even allowed to be doing solo rides on Waymo. Um, right, right. They're not supposed Waymo. to do it. Right, yeah. So they're if doing this despite that. Yeah. So that's funny. And apparently, I mean, they're going to they're looking into maybe having some teen program in the future. <laughs> Which I think would be out. smart for Waymo because yeah. like Uber does that now. Yeah, that's where what you they were can saying. Do, like, yeah. Teenagers can get Uber uh -huh. accounts and they're extra tracked. You know, like yeah. the parent can keep tabs on the kid yeah. and then there's like there's certain drivers that, yeah. that can drive teen. I don't know. Yeah. But so. the other thing that I thought was super interesting about this is that they want to do these Waymos because they're afraid of their kids walking to public transportation. Yeah. And so that just kind of goes into public really safety and like how the, that that public safety concern for so many like families out yeah. there are causing them to they would much prefer like a driverless car. Like they don't mm -hmm. trust like you know, drivers and, yeah. you know, they don't want their kids to walk. Yeah. You know? More than an Uber or yeah. more than uh -huh. public transit. Yeah. But just like, I mean, traversing a city of San Francisco as a yeah. kid. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that I think that'd be a little scary as a parent to kind of trust that. Right. Yeah, for sure. I, I totally I'm, agree. I'm pretty, pretty like 
into like I, I really encourage my kids to walk places mm-hmm. and yeah. but I also live in a very different city than yeah, San Francisco. But like I really encourage them to kind of mm-hmm. go walk and mm-hmm. go play and get out there and like I don't yeah. need to be monitoring your every move. Mm-hmm. You just need to check in, you know, at dinner or whatever. Yeah, exactly. But um but yeah, I mean I don't think I would trust my kid to walk through San Francisco to school. Yeah, I think it maybe would depend. I think it depends on, on where you live. Yeah. On where you live. Um, I mean, I know my brother-in-law lives in San Francisco, and I don't know how they handle it. Well, actually, I do. They don't have to work. They they still have to telework. Yeah. They, and they've, yeah, yeah. they've decided they want to stay in San Francisco. Um, so they are able to probably take their kids to school and that kind of stuff. But they live in, I think, a decent neighborhood, you know. Yeah. So I think it just kind of depends. Yeah, I um, I I just I, I thought it was an interesting story. So yeah, we'll it's see. super um, interesting. I had I, no idea. I didn't idea. even know this was a thing. I was like, what? I didn't either. Um, but yeah, yeah, Waymo should really figure out how to make that allowable. I know exactly. So that people don't feel like they're doing it like against breaking the rules. Or yeah, whatever. that's so hilarious. Um, it's kind of brilliant, honestly. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like that. Uh, I don't. Are you a Friends fan? I can't remember. So. I, yeah. But I, there's a story. Obviously, Matthew yeah. Perry is what I was going to talk about. Mm-hmm. Um, a woman was, or there's a few people actually charged in his yeah, death. Yeah, like five or something. Yeah, so crazy. Um, but I, I forgot if you're a friends. Fan I am not a friends fan. So that's right. You're not. A, that's where we I know. Disagree. I know it's very controversial to say that. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not a friends fan. Yeah. I, I watched it for like the yeah. first several seasons, and then I just felt like. Uh, I don't know. It's too much for but me. But you said your breaking point was Joe and, yeah. and Rachel getting together. Yeah. Right? I'm just like, I'm so done. I, I mean, do we, like, we're we swapping partners now. I'm so not into that. Like, come hilarious. on. Like, let's just yeah. not go through the That's whole friend. That's actually not my favorite thing about friends. Yeah. Either, let's not go through the you, whole but... uh, friends group for that. Yeah. For relationship building. Yeah. So this woman, I guess her. Sh- yeah. What what she's a I don't ketamine queen or something ketamine like that. Ketamine queen, yeah. Uh-huh, if that's how you Jasmine say it. Jasmine Singa. Um, uh huh. She was like everyone's drug dealer, apparently. Apparently. And uh, yeah, if you have a name like ketamine queen, that's probably <laughs> probably not a good sign. Yeah, but, exactly. Uh, yeah, really sad. I mean, and like they were actually charging Matthew Perry like just insane amounts of money for Mm -hmm. drugs that cost like a fraction of that i know know, it was crazy like he was paying like 50k for like two grand worth of you know drugs yeah yeah because they just knew he'd pay whatever he would pay addicted people will do whatever yeah well addicted people who have unlimited money too yeah they, they just took advantage of them and just i i that was super sad i mean we're huge friends fans in our family yeah so I think that was a really sad um, story. But. It is really sad. And it's just really sad that he never could beat that. Because I think I everyone know. thought yeah. he finally did. Everyone yep. kind of thought he was... In a good place. In a good, yeah, yeah, exactly. That he had battled his through his addiction and he had you know conquered it and that type of thing. And unfortunately, he didn't. Yeah. And Brutal. I think that that's sad no matter who that happens to. Um, sure. You know, but... Yeah, I, I I don't know. It's brutal. yeah, it's really brutal. Um, yeah, we we play friends trivia at my house. That's yeah. how into friends we are. So we're Seinfeld people. And we yeah, th- <laughs> those yeah. I mean, I, I like Seinfeld too, but yeah. definitely not comparable to me. Yeah, for me, it's like <laughs> totally the opposite. Like Seinfeld's <laughs> absolutely amazing. I love I it. I do enjoy Seinfeld though. Yeah, um, and we had a Seinfeld uh, trivia, so same as you probably, but the Seinfeld version of oh, I don't yeah, remember yeah, what yeah. that like game was called. Or whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We so we have the Friends version. Yeah, and my wife is like unbeatable. <laughs> like we, she like challenges people. So she's the real fan to see if like anyone can beat her. I can't beat her. Nobody can yeah. beat her in her house. I will say like this is obviously an opinion. I think Friends is aged better than Seinfeld, um, uh, just from the standpoint of like. My kids watch Friends and they mm-hmm. love Friends. Uh, and then apparently, like, Friends is coming back into mm-hmm. fashion with younger yeah. people or whatever. Um, I don't hear that about Seinfeld, but I could be wrong. So my kids like Seinfeld. They do? Okay. They are also Friends people. Okay. So my yeah. kids both are Friends people, but they yeah. both watch have seen all the Seinfelds too. But I we we had Seinfeld on our TV all the like time all the when time. they were young yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. And I like think that. that obviously influences it because we just yeah. watch Friends on a loop. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like... 
it's just on, you know, so yeah. um but yeah, so that 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 was a sad one. Um Yeah, that was sad. Uh last story here before we get into kind of the 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 prop 36 poll, but um digital so they announced oh, that yeah. digital driver's licenses are coming to Apple and Google wallets. I mm. think the governor put out an announcement on this. This is something DMV has been working on for a while. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't really have. I I just thought it was interesting. I mean, I it is interesting. I I know this has been in the works for a while. Yeah, it's going to be super limited in the early versions of it, yeah. just because not everyone's going to accept it. I don't mm-hmm. even think you can use it for planes. So I guess you can in like San Francisco and LA, like the major ones. Oh, like just ones. certain airports. Yeah. yeah, but they 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 think the rollout for the rest of the airports will happen later this year. Okay, yeah. Because I'm like, it's meaningless if you still have to carry your yeah. your regular driver's license. It totally is. Too. Yeah. It's it's meaningless. But it would be really nice if it ends up being something that like we could that we could yeah. rely on because that would be awesome to I, like, I think it would be cool. Yeah. I would definitely use it. Yeah. For, for like sure. we'll going to a bar or like yeah. especially doing something like yeah. that, going to a bar or going to or just or just you're gonna have your license for a bar, but yeah. like maybe at a restaurant and then you end yeah. up deciding to have a cocktail and maybe you walked there or well, something. Well the funny like thing that. is even know. just driving your car. Like yeah. because I'm always like whenever I go anywhere i have mm-hmm. to grab three things you know uh-huh. like keys wallet phone mm-hmm. but most of the time you can pay for apple pay everywhere like yeah. i don't really need my wallet for yeah. anything and like this is the only reason i grab that is for my license yeah exactly you know so um well i know and i have definitely. and i have my phone and i'll like give my my um id to my husband to carry like you know what i mean just i'll carry yeah. my id for me if we're going somewhere yeah you know i went to uh uh, Disneyland as a chaperone actually recently. Yeah. I think I told you about that. You did, yeah. But one of the guys that was with us, he was like one of the husbands or whatever. Uh, I was I was carrying like a little drawstring bag with all my stuff in it. Yeah. I'm like, what else am I going to do? I got a bunch of stuff. Uh-huh. And he didn't have a bag. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, mm-hmm. uh, like, how do you not have like a bag of stuff? Like your wallet, your phone. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, I'm good. Yeah, I don't, I don't need to carry anything. And I was like, that's weird. And then I run into his wife, and she has a bag with all of his stuff <laughs> in it. And I'm like, he's like, oh, yeah, this is just how I roll. I'm like, no, you just have someone that will carry all yeah, of your stuff. I'm not that someone. <laughs> I'm not that someone. And it was hilarious. I gave him so much <laughs> crap for that because I was like, oh, my God. Well, and my husband has, like, a, a thing that, like, connects to his phone that you could just fit, like, your driver's license and one credit yeah, card. Yeah, that's pretty cool. You know, so he kind of, that's, that, what, he, just, that's always, what he likes. Yeah. And for me, I'll just, you know, if I just have it, I'll just put it in my back pocket or something. I'll be down, though. Yeah, I'll use it. I'll be down, too. Digital. Like, Let's do it. Yeah. Um, I, I think so. Yeah, last story. So, new poll. Um, IGS, Berkeley. Oh. Um, governmental studies poll. Um, shows, well, essentially that, well, so I'll just read it. Okay. The results of the poll released Friday showed that 56% of Californians would support Prop 36, which is obviously this initiative coming to the ballot in November to Mm -hmm. reform and somewhat overturn or at least reform proposition 47, which, um, was, uh, you know, changed all these penalties on theft and drugs to Mm -hmm. from felonies to misdemeanors. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that, that is an interesting finding. Um, they also, you know, tested, a number of other things. I think the minimum wage mm-hmm. looked like it was had support barely, but like barely. 50%. Yeah. That's and not then, a good place to start though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then, uh, prop 33 rent control, rent control was like 40% support. So that one looks not like it's going down. Well, it's gone down the last, so three it's gone down every four, time. Yeah, that it's been four, like every, well, every single election, Yep. every yeah. single, single general yeah. election that's on and it always dies. Or always loses. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, that's really good news. I mean, Prop 36. I mean, I'm definitely someone who voted against Prop 47. But of course, I worked in the legislature. So I kind of knew that yeah. the ballot title was misleading. Yeah. And it wasn't going to do those things that it like promised to do. It wasn't going to make our streets right. safer. <laughs> Safe schools and <laughs> Safe streets and, yeah, so, or whatever. Some. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I'm like, uh, that's not what this bill or that's not what this proposition does. Yeah. And so um, I think that everyone's like, yeah, tired of it. They're really tired of like all the 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 yeah. footage that we've seen like throughout the last, 
you know, throughout the years of just yeah. like these smash and grabs or just like all of these people who are just committing retail theft, like again and again and again. And the way that the Prop 47 did it was that if you were a repeat offender, every single time you are treated like it's your first time. Yep. And I feel like people don't understand that. Like you can do it 10 times and yep. go and steal again and again and again. And it will always be treated like your first time. Yeah. And it's a slap on it's a slap on the wrist. Yeah. You know, unless it's like a felony um amount which, that you're which taking. It can't be unless you steal over, over yeah, nine fifty or yeah. whatever. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. So and, I and just, people know how to game the system. I mean, yeah. they know exactly what the limits are. Exactly. Where, where the law stops, right? Yeah. Um, uh-huh. Interestingly, so I agree, yeah. So uh, on um I think there we'll we'll just roll this into our clip of the week because I'm I'll play it for you and we'll keep talking about okay. it. But it's um, there, there's, there are a number of people that are not excited about Prop 36. Yeah, exactly. And they did a big press conference, and mm-hmm. so I'm going to play a clip from that. Um, there is a lot of clips to choose from. Uh, I chose one by a state senator um, that I thought was interesting. Okay. Again, I don't agree with their perspective, but it's an interesting clip. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll play this, and we'll get your take. Go on 36! Go on 36! We're just holding on to the excellent youth programs that we have started and developed and designed that are providing the kind of support to our young people. So again, our young people can thrive and be successful. Sure, there was a bit of an uptick in crime after the pandemic. What wasn't after the pandemic? It completely disrupted all of us. Our schools were closed, our businesses were closed, people were out of work. Of course we've had disruption. Now, what are we seeing? Less crime, less addiction, less drug use. This is not the time to return to a ridiculous, failed policy. So I I don't know about you, but my (laughs) constituents and the business owners I've talked to and all the people I've talked to about, you know, what's going on in our communities Mm -hmm. don't feel like there's less crime. They don't feel like there's less homelessness or less... Drug use. Drug use. Right? Yeah. Um, you know, we're losing more people today than we ever have to fentanyl mm-hmm. poisoning. Mm-hmm. We've got, you know, a pretty rampant retail theft across the state. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, a, a, the news, it's interesting because a lot of this press conference um, actually blamed the media. So, like, I mean, yeah. I, I was following Ashley's of all because I wasn't at the press conference. Ashley was live tweeting it. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it was just really interesting. It was like, uh, she, I'm trying to look at what she was saying. I'm going to read one of her tweets here. But basically, the, a lot of people were blaming the media for showing the smash and grabs on the news. Mm-hmm. But, you know, for all the stuff that they're showing. But yeah. it's like, well, okay, but it's happening. Right? Uh-huh. Like, so, yeah. you know, you can't, I mean, you can't blame the media for showing something that's happening. You can um, as you know, uh, it, because they're just showing mm-hmm. the reality of it. Right. Well, yeah. And I actually think the media has done a semi decent job, like actually yeah. highlighting some of the stuff going on in the bigger cities. Yeah. Right? Um, but yeah, it's. Uh, and, and less crime. I mean, the first in and out closed in Oakland, the only in and out to only ever in-N-Out close. To ever close. Yeah. And it was because of crime. Yeah. I mean, like half the businesses have closed. I mean, like so yeah. many businesses have closed, because, citing crime in Oakland, San Francisco. I mean, so like to act like crime is down. Well, then why are all of these businesses shuttering their doors and citing crime as the reason if it's like so if things have gotten so much better? And then like yeah. drug use. Are you kidding? I mean, we haven't. You know, of course, we haven't dealt with fentanyl in a serious way yeah. at all in, in the legislature because they either. They either kill fentanyl bills or they amend them to where they're they basically don't work. They're too hard to prove yeah. fentanyl cases. Um, so they either water them down or kill them. So like they're not, and it's like fentanyl is a serious, you know, it's obviously such a seriously addictive drug, and we're not willing to do anything to, you know, solve that problem. Yeah, and to act like drug use is down. I mean. Like half of the people, obviously, that we the visible homeless people that we see, yeah, are dealing with either mental health or drug addiction. Drug abuse, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, it's it's pretty interesting. Uh, just the differences of the two perspectives. 
Yeah, exactly. But there uh, is bipartisan support on Prop 36. Oh, tons, tons, yeah. You know, even the mayor of San Francisco is yeah, supporting. San Francisco, San Jose, you know, a lot of mayors across the state. Yeah. All um, the big box, big, big box retailers are supporting. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think it's uh, it's interesting. I mean, I, I always, you know, am always open to hearing other perspectives. But yeah. That one I just don't understand. Yeah. So. Well, I've seen, you know, my local grocery store people like come in and walk out with stuff all the time. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? It's just, unfortunately, the fact that I've seen that many, many times, um, you know, that's just kind of like where we're at. Yeah. Um, so we'll go ahead and wrap there. Do you have okay. any final thoughts for the, for the, for the day? No. Well, I'm just hoping uh, like we get through this week and maybe, know. you know, we have, maybe it ends a little bit sooner than we expect. I mean, yeah. it's like, if it wasn't for late minute amendments, like we, yeah, you know. We'll have to like see what happens this week, I guess. Well, and everyone's going to blame the seventy-two hour rule, which is the you know the voters yeah. put in place yeah. to require bills being printed for three days before they can be acted upon yeah. in their final form. Um, you can blame that all you want, but I'm yeah. glad we, I'm so glad we have it. Oh uh, well, yeah, Trans- <laughs> transparency because it is so much more transparent. I mean, the way this place used to work was incredible, yeah. right? Where we would have amendments happen like an hour before the bill uh-huh. got voted on. Yeah, and then like. Who gets to, how are you going to respond to that yeah. or oppose that or support yeah. that? We were making deals like last day of session, like making deals, Crazy. doing bills, having yeah. off the floor hearings, no stakeholder groups no had time, time to, react. to yeah. react or whatever. We were doing that kind of stuff all the time. That was just commonplace. And now it just happens three days before instead. But it's amazing how those three days... <laughs> They matter, though, because mm-hmm. they give organizations and stakeholders time to read the bill, yeah. react to the bill, maybe oppose or support mm-hmm. the bill, right? Whatever whatever they're going to do. Yeah. But, like, the, the I don't know. I feel like looking back, the idea that that wasn't in place before is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, especially because we know how those places run. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Every, so much is done behind closed doors that, like, I'm going to be sitting on the assembly floor this week. And there's going to be deals being made that I have huh? zero clue of what's happening. <laughs> exactly. Right? Like, I mean, it's it's pretty wild, uh-huh. right? It is wild. And, and even some of the you know folks on the other side of the aisle won't know what's happening. It's just like happening. Yeah. You know, exactly. A couple people in a room figuring something out. Uh-huh. You know, so. Yeah. Pretty so, crazy. Yeah. So that's it. I hope hopefully we survive the week and then have <laughs> a little little time for rest and relaxation or vacationing afterwards. So I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to Sounds get through like this week. <laughs> Um, just a quick announcement. So this is actually our last show before session ends. And then, um, throughout the fall, um, we're going to have some special guests on. So, um, it won't be a weekly podcast for the fall. Um, but we will have a, you know, one to two episodes a month, probably, um, through the rest of the year, a little bit different format. We've already kind of pre-recorded some of, um, um, going to have some interesting content coming for you. And uh, the actually, we're going to have our first uh, Democratic member of the legislature on the podcast in the fall. Yeah, that's so, that's going to yeah. be fun. I'm sure that was that a is, fun, it is, fun it conversation. It's been recorded. Yeah, I know. It's, it's ready. So I we'll know. tease that. But uh, really interesting conversation, actually. Yeah. And um, that one will be, be coming uh, in the next few weeks here. So yeah. looking forward to sharing that with folks. But uh, other than that, like this weekly pod kind of uh, following legislative session is going to be on pause until January. So until January. Yeah. I know. It's pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. So, but we'll be back. We'll be back. And um, if you want to share ideas for future shows um, or future guests, anything like that, uh, email pointoforderpod at gmail.com. You can listen on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Watch, subscribe, or follow on YouTube, X, Instagram, Threads, and Facebook at Point of Order Pod. And uh, you can follow me on X, if you would like, at Joshua underscore Hoover. Um, Teresa, thank you again for coming on again. Again. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have a feeling it's going to be a growing trend. <laughs> Honestly, the next time we have you on yeah. might be after the signing deadline and we'll need to break down some of the bills that like got signed Yeah, or we have vetoed. Yeah. So I think that would be the next episode that we okay. should do together. Sounds All fun. Right. So October. October. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sounds good. We'll see you next time. Okay. Thanks. Bye.